Today, I am at Marina Bay Park here in Richmond, California. My lovely wife, Lizzie, will be joining us for the walk today. Hi, everyone. And um, actually, this is not our first time over here. This is our first time here on this trip, but we actually stayed right over here by all these townhouses that you guys will see like five years ago. And it's a, actually a pretty nice area, but you know, the rest of Richmond, yeah, I don't know, guys, it's kind of sketchy. But uh, this is a pretty cool place to walk around, see the water, see the boats, see the townhouses, and talk about how so many people are gonna be losing homeowner's insurance coverage if you get this letter in the mail and you don't do something about it. And even though we're in California, we're gonna be going back to my roots and talking about Florida stories today because as many of you know, Florida is in big trouble when it comes to homeowner's insurance. More than 300,000 Florida homeowners are being warned that they need to respond to this letter, uh, basically an offer letter to go off of citizens insurance, okay? and. The deadline for this is October 10th. So that's why I'm making this video now because this is right around the corner. This, you literally have like two, two and a half weeks right now to basically do this before you lose coverage from your citizen's insurance. I've covered this a few times in the past in that uh, citizens announced earlier this year that a lot of people are gonna be forced to go off of citizens and basically how that works is if you get an offer letter that is 20% above what citizens is charging or less, then you must take it. And if you don't, then citizens will drop you. And that's why I'm making this video to give people this heads up and the warning that if you don't do something about it, you will lose homeowner's insurance coverage. And that's the last thing you want to happen because first of all, if you lose coverage, when you're able to actually finally get coverage again, it's gonna be more expensive because there was a lapse in your policy. So that's number one. You don't want to lose coverage at all. And the other problem is if you lose coverage and your lender finds out about it, they're going to put a forced place insurance policy on your property for you, but the problem is it's gonna cost probably triple what your current homeowner's insurance policy is, and combined with the fact that if something actually happens to the property, most of the coverage is for them, for the lender. So that way they can get their piece of the pie back if something happens to your property, but it largely leaves you at risk as the actual homeowner. So those are two big reasons you don't want your homeowner's insurance to get dropped. You know, there's a woman over in uh, Orlando that talked to her and she's with citizens insurance she got a renewal letter for citizens uh, for three thousand seventy nine dollars and that's already double what it was before now she got a new offer from a new company for four thousand nine hundred and eighty dollars okay that's a 61 percent increase now obviously that's well beyond the 20 percent that's mandatory for somebody to accept the thing is though you still have to respond to the letter you have to respond with either a yes or a no that you're going to accept the new offer and if you do nothing you just let the letter just you know throw it away guys and don't do anything then you're at risk of losing your coverage altogether. So it's very important if you are one of the 300,000 people or you know somebody who is in that category that you do something about this ASAP before you lose the coverage. Now here's the problem, if you do nothing and don't respond to this letter, you can either, one, get dropped from your insurance, which we just talked about is a really bad thing for you to happen to you, and the other thing that can happen is you can automatically be switched to the new insurance policy. So if this woman in Orlando, you know, she's looking at a $3,100 a month bill, if she did nothing, then all of a sudden her insurance would be bumped up to 5000 because she didn't say anything. So she would automatically be transferred to the new insurance carrier. So this is really a big deal. And even though it's only 300,000 people right now, you can bet there's gonna be more people facing this issue in the future, which is why I wanna bring it up early so a lot of you people who watch my channel are aware of this. And even though right now this is just a Florida problem, this can easily become a problem in other areas of the country, guys, where people are getting dropped, just like here in California, 
places in Louisiana, people in Colorado. There's a lot of different areas where people are experiencing trouble with their homeowner's insurance. And in case you're not aware, the reason why Citizens is doing this is because they have way too many insurance policies. The amount that they have now has completely ballooned over the past three or four years. They're currently at 1.4 million policies. And like four years ago, it was only like, uh, what, 400,000, something like that. It was a very low number compared to where it is right now. So just make sure, guys, if you're affected by this and you know someone who is, make sure you do your best to get the best deal on insurance. And even the thing that sucks about this is even if you do find the best deal right now, like it can be taken away from you next year. That's the worst part about this whole insurance situation and the state of affairs with it because so many insurance companies are pulling out of insuring these high risk areas. So many insurance companies are charging prices to the moon now if they're going to insure you and you know they're dropping people for stupid reasons you know you if your roof is over 10 15 years old they'll drop you if you have the wrong tree in your yard in the wrong place they'll drop you if you have solar panels on your roof they'll drop you like there's all different kinds of things that can happen right now and so the more that you know of what's coming down the pipeline with this, this being the latest iteration of it, you know, of being forced to change insurance companies, whether you want to or not, you need to be aware of these things. And obviously it's not just happening in Florida. Here in California, they're facing their own insurance issues as well. And back in 2018, a small town in it called Paradise, California had a really deadly wildfire wiped out almost the entire town. And some of you guys asked me to go up there and check it out, but it's just too far away, guys. It's like three hours from where I'm staying right now. And so it's just not really a day trip for me. So maybe another time. But anyways, there's a woman who was from there and in 2020, she wanted to move back into the area, try to help the community rebuild and all of this. And they started building a house and uh, moved into the house in October of 2022, okay? and. When she got her homeowner's insurance bill, the premium was supposed to be $2,500 a year. Well, actually it went up to $11,245 per year, which is completely ridiculous and unaffordable. And guess what? You know what the insurance company told her? They said, oh, just be thankful we didn't drop you. And then she's like, well, you just did because I can't afford this. Here's the crazy thing, guys. People are being hit with these insurance premiums over in the Paradise, California area because the whole place got burned down. But these are brand new houses that are built to the most recent standards, okay? They're built up to fire code. There's no fuel laying around the house to be burned. And now some people are even facing higher premiums than that. There's somebody else that has a $21,000 yearly homeowner's insurance premium for a new construction home in this area. So this is just absolutely nuts. And it just goes to show you what insurance companies are doing right now because they're just not gonna be covering people in these high risk areas without charging an, a massive premium. Over in Louisiana, they have problems. They also have citizens insurance over there and they had to raise rates by 63% in 2023. Reinsurance companies like Swiss and Munich, they raised their property catastrophe and reinsurance premiums in the US by an average of 20 to 50%, depending on the area, 20 to 50%. And guess what? That cost gets passed along to you as the homeowner. And this is literally the highest increase of reinsurance prices since Hurricane Katrina back in 2004. So we're talking 20 years ago. And that just goes to show you how bad it's getting. Like, haven't you seen like the recurring theme here with everything with real estate and the price of everything in this economy? Like, you know, things are just as bad now as it was 30 years ago. And this is the highest increase since the last 20 years ago. These are the highest interest rates since the last 25 years ago. You guys get in the picture here that we are in this cycle now of we're entering a time where everything is going to just be, you know, exploding in price. And that's why I believe things are gonna to have to change sooner than later, because there's no way we can continue on this current trajectory and the world and the economy is supposed to just function as normal. It's not gonna happen. For anybody who's wondering what reinsurance is, it's basically insurance for insurance companies. They basically uh, step in to help uh, with losses when the insurance company themselves can't handle the full amount. So for example, um, if you have a reinsurance contract for $20 million, 
It could mean that the regular insurance companies, say you have State Farm, they have to cover the first $10 million in losses, and then the reinsurance company will come in and cover the remaining $10 million. So it's almost like a, a huge deductible for the actual insurance company, if you will. And now, these reinsurance companies are getting serious in terms of they have dedicated resources to studying catastrophes and climate change and other type of risk factors that are impacting the insurance industry that of course did help them determine how much they should charge in a given area. Now one thing I will side with the insurance companies on here is inflation has definitely made it more expensive to rebuild any sort of existing home. You know, anything that was built 10 years ago is going to cost more to rebuild today than it did then. That's just a reality and therefore premiums do have to go up. But at the rate that they are going up is unsustainable for homeowners, guys. And that's the problem too. Like, I think it's going to come to a point where insurance could end up being so expensive that it's either one, going to have to make the value of properties come way down to be able to compensate so people can afford that on their monthly payments, or if that doesn't happen, then there might need to be major shifts in terms of when it comes to getting a mortgage and the laws surrounding that, because if you have a mortgage, you need to have insurance. And if you don't, then like I said earlier, they will put a forced place insurance plan on your property for you, whether you ask them to or not, they will do it. So there needs to come to a point where, like maybe if certain homeowners can show that they are financially viable enough to sort of self-insure their property, then maybe contingencies like that can get waived for some people. But you know, even then, that's only gonna be a small percentage of folks who are even gonna be able to qualify for something like that. What about the vast majority of people that don't have the cash to self-insure? Where's that gonna leave them? You know, that's what I'm thinking. You watch me? Oh, oh nice. I'm filming a video right now. What's oh, your name? I'm sure you're helping a lot of people like me that don't really subscribe to anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying my best, you know, I'm trying to keep people aware of what's going on. Right now I'm talking about insurance, you know, and giving people the heads up on everything. So it's, it's important for, for people to know this stuff. What's your name? Margaret. 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 So yeah. nice to meet you. Yeah, Margaret. nice to meet you, Margaret. I don't, because like I said, I'm retired and I've, you know, done my saving of my five cents, but I look at different videos sometimes. I feel I've gone to college on YouTube. Yes, right. you, you can. You kind of <laughs> can now, you know, at least informally. And it's yes. enough to get you where you need to be in life a lot of times, I think. Right. And just you know? hope that like a lot of young people are paying attention. I think some are, I mean, maybe, because they've just got to get they didn't have anybody at home to teach them. That's yeah. another thing. That's right. I see some busy. people, I yeah. see some younger ones in the comments sometimes saying, hey, Michael, I'm 25, you know, I have X amount of money saved and, you know, I'm out of debt now and paid off the student loans. Like there are some that are getting there. They're doing it, you know, but some are just not paying attention and they're in the Looneyville world on the phone, you know. Right, and they don't understand that, you know, because, and again, it's growing up, I heard a lot of stories about the Depression, you know, I mean, boy, that was a rough time. And, but then they kind of spoiled their kids, too. They want them to go through that. Uh, so it's, and, and they don't, they don't have anybody even to talk, tell them what, you know, like a starter place. I mean, you don't have to buy, you can't buy one. If you're young, you can't buy this. You can't afford the homeowner's right. association fee. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> That's correct. But the problem is, if you it, like in this area, if you want to really, if there isn't such a thing, it would not be in a great area, and you'd be in trouble. Yeah, that's kind of the biggest problem, I think, with the whole Bay Area in general. If you want something affordable, it's going to be in a not nice area. Yeah. No? No. But I, I always wonder too, and I know it sounds like an old fogey, but young people almost have to make a few sacrifices. Yes, like, they don't do. Get the fancy apartment. Can't yep. you go live in a for a, a they year, they be on their means. I yes. completely agree with you, Margaret. Save, and, and, and people have asked right. me because I was able to retire young, but they said, how did you do that? Did you have a budget? I said, no, you don't need a budget. You have to live below your, below your means. Right. And you save that extra, and that extra, you know, then helps you buy a house. Absolutely. At one time, maybe it's going to be harder now. Yeah, well, even now, I think it still could be possible. I mean, you look at these prices and it seems out of reach, but if you'd live below your means, like you're saying, and you do save, you're constantly improving your income, 
eventually you're going to get there you yeah, know you, you might not get there at 25 anymore like no. generations past but you'll get there right and you just cannot go out to eat you know we and because that's where i really see it i mean it's wonderful to go out to eat once in a while but boy the restaurants are hurting and you could see that they're having trouble getting staff and they're going to raise the rate. i mean you just have to learn how to you know, and the prices too, you pay, you know, $10 for a beer, you know, $18 for a cocktail. They pay, you know, 10 bucks for a Starbucks, the different things that just, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, when I drive here, there's a Starbucks right across the way there and it's packed. Yeah. And this is from, I'm sure, area, these people should not be buying a $10, but they want a treat and so whatever. But that old thing that, you know, I grew up with and you probably heard stories about that you just had to make do with what you had and uh, yeah and, but anyway you're doing a great service thank you glad to see your name <laughs> doing it. thank you so much okay thank you have you. a beautiful walk bye take care take margaret, care, margaret. Okay. bye Well, that was really cool to meet another fan of the channel. I just love meeting you guys out in public like this. Margaret was able to give me a bunch of history on the area. And of course, I cut a bunch out of what we were talking about just to give you the short version to show you that there's so many cool people who watch my channel. And uh, every time you guys stop and say hello, I really appreciate it. But coming back to insurance here for a moment, one thing that these reinsurance companies are doing with their prediction models and all of this is they're trying to get places like the state of California, which I think they just passed this, where they can start charging rates based on what they think is going to happen in the future, not what has actually happened. Like for example, the wildfire situation is probably the biggest uh, natural disaster they have here in California. So now they can start charging people rates based on what they believe, what the prediction is of where there's going to be so many different wildfires in the future versus actual historic data. So I'm sure that's also going to increase the amount that they're going to be able to charge people. So you already have like four states in the bullseye, guys. Well, oh, maybe even five. You got Texas, you got Florida, you got California, you have Colorado, you have Louisiana. All these places right now are ground zero for massive insurance rate hikes. But I wouldn't be surprised if you're going to see more of that coming to a city near you because as you have more, uh, you know, ice storms or hail storms or tornadoes or whatever it is where you live, you can rest assured that these insurance companies are going to be performing similar rate hikes in your area with all these things going on. And with the higher cost to build now, the higher replacement costs, the higher labor costs, there is some legitimacy to charging people more to be able to pay for those things. But remember, they are for profit companies. They need to turn a profit. Insurance companies don't do this out of the kindness of their heart. So I don't know how much of that is actually profit and how much of it is actually necessary. We'll, we'll never know, but just be on the lookout because if you're going to become a homeowner, you need to understand all the costs involved. And right now, property taxes and insurance are going to be your big ones outside of your actual mortgage payment. And in some cases, it can actually be more. Than your mortgage payment so keep that in mind moving on to the economy at large here one of my subscribers made a comment maybe a week or two ago about the irs and shutting down the pandemic tax credit that a bunch of different businesses were getting and basically what it is is it's called the employee retention tax credit basically the whole point of this tax credit was for employers to keep people employed because they were giving people up to twenty six thousand dollars per year per employee. So if you have a business and say you have 10 employees, that's 260 grand a year that you could be receiving as a subsidy from the IRS in the form of a tax credit to keep these people employed. But now that that is going away and they're not going to be looking at any more applications, at least until 2024, this could spell disaster for the economy and the jobs reports because already the jobs numbers are going down, down, down in terms of the revisions. And they come out with these jobs reports every single month. And then, you know, a month or two later, they get revised down. It's actually less than what they reported. And so when 
that's already happening means that the interest rate hikes from the Fed are already starting to have an effect on the economy and throw in this as a monkey wrench where you know these employers are not going to have this tax credit anymore it's going to be much more of an incentive for a lot of employers to cut people right now because they're going to be losing that credit guys and if you have a business that's been able to get by pretty reasonably because of this and now all of a sudden they can't because the amount that they're having to pay people versus what they're bringing in is not there rest assured that they're going to be laying more people off but of course the problem with this is not only the fact that it's costing u.s taxpayers a ton of money for them to be able to do this but of course whenever there's something that's well-intentioned you have something called fraud just like with insurance that's part of the reason insurance is so expensive now and it's part of the reason they're trying to get rid of this because there's about 600,000 requests right now on the IRS desk of pending claims for this employee retention credit well they're gonna have to go through and audit you know all of these to make sure there's no fraud involved here because you have people that are claiming they have this business or that business and five different employees and literally don't have anybody that have been receiving this tax credit so now they have to go back and investigate these people who got it and you know things that look suspicious and that's the problem right the, the whole world today just like we were talking with uh margaret margaret yeah just like margaret was saying like you know everything is so different now guys when, compared to times when she grew up especially around here like just people's attitudes and work ethic and you know level of trust was just different back then you know now you know it's like you can't count on anybody to do anything and you got to worry about getting scammed so that's the reason things like this are going away And here's the other problem with this uh, employee tax credit, okay? They have actually exceeded the expectations for how much this was supposed to cost, right? So the biggest problem is that this is costing us taxpayers more money than they originally thought that it would. And that's not sustainable either because obviously this huge spending spree that our government decided to go on during the pandemic is unsustainable and cannot continue in this direction and so that's the other reason they're looking at not accepting more requests you know you throw in fraud you throw in over budget spending it's going to be game over guys which is just going to be another nail in the coffin for the labor market if you ask me but it's not even just fraud like it says that many accountants uh, they file these claims for employers and a lot of times these uh, claims are filled with errors and they're not actually eligible to receive it but then they they wrongfully get the money so even if it's not even with bad intentions to commit fraud sometimes it's it's not deserved it's not supposed to be going to these employers that are applying for it and check this out this is such a thing right now that the IRS says it's receiving about 50,000 claims per week at the moment, which is more than twice what they were getting back in March of 2020 when this whole thing was conceived. And as of March of 2023, the IRS has paid $150 billion in the employee retention credits. So if you don't think that's stimulus, you don't think that's helping inch the economy forward and helping more people keep jobs right now, it is it's having a major impact but that might not even be the real number the treasury estimates that it's actually not 150 billion that they've actually spent 230 billion and how crazy is this right these numbers are all getting so huge and so out of control with the billions and trillions and these government agencies can't even agree on how much was spent like that to me is just negligence and fraud right there from our own government right they don't even know how much money is going into these programs that they invented or where it's going and now they have to go and backtrack and try to hunt people down just like they have to do now with the EIDL loans and the PPP loans all this money that was stolen guys this is going to be just the next chapter of it you know you have employee retention credit or stolen money that's never going to be reclaimed in my opinion and any of it that is probably gonna be a very small portion so if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to the channel and if you don't want to wait for my next one to come out check out this one on the screen right over here and I'll see you in the next one